Hey everybody, what's going on? I got another gold guide video for you today. It's the PP19 Bison. Um, just like all the other SMGs, it's pretty good. It holds its own. Uh, I've said it in every other SMG video, but the, all the SMGs, there isn't really a terrible one. They're all pretty decent. They all hold their own. Um, they're very similar to the assault rifles when it comes to the camo challenges. Uh, like with w exactly what you have to do. Um, I think they are identical. The only difference is that the amount needed for like total headshots, total kills, uh, total long shots, stuff like that, it's a little bit reduced. So it, they go through a little bit faster. Um, but if this is your first gold guide video you're seeing from me, uh, to give you kind of a, an idea of what or how this video is structured, because these videos usually are 15 minutes plus, um, I break down each gun into four different builds, depending on the gun, like class or the gun in general, it might be more or less. Uh, those specific builds are just going to target specific camo categories. Um, that way I'm giving you a bunch of different builds that are really good at what they're meant to do. Uh, rather than giving you one build that's kind of overall okay at getting all of them done. Um, that's how I got through my Damascus grind and it was it's what I found to be the easiest way uh, to get all the, all the challenges done is to just go for like one, one or two camos uh, specifically. I mean, unless you're using, like, the kills build, because then that's going to cover, I think, like, I don't even know, like, four different uh, categories. Um, but yeah, it's what I found to be most effective. Uh, if you're a veteran Call of Duty player, these videos probably aren't for you. I don't really set, mention anything completely groundbreaking. These videos are mostly meant for new players. There is a couple tips that I give throughout the video uh, that I think are is pretty helpful, especially when it comes to the long shot and mounted kills. I think I have a very good system down for getting those. Um... And usually those are people's least two favorite uh, like challenges to get uh, gold for. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and just get right into the builds. That way this video isn't crazy long. Um, but if you do want to just skip through the video, I have all the timestamps down below. And then to touch on the last part of the video, it's I after the gun builds, I go into camo requirements. Where I talk about all the different camos themselves. What you need to do to get them. The best maps to play on. The best game modes to play on those maps. And then a variation of the game mode, whether it's hardcore or core. And then I give you any other tips and tricks that I picked up along my way to Damascus. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to hop right into the first build, which should be the kills build. Alright, so right here we have the kills build. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, it's a little bit different than my usual kills build that I have. Um, the only reason for that being is because this doesn't have a underbarrel like rail. So you don't have a underbarrel attachment slot. Um, but it's pretty similar. So for your optic, you guys can use whatever optic you like. I use the monocle reflex sight. I tend to stick to the GI mini reflex. Um, the reason for that being is because it's got this super thin bezel compared to something like the holographic sight. As you can see this thing is super chunky. You can easily hide somebody behind this bezel right here. Uh, but in this case, for the PP19, I actually used a monocle reflex sight. For some reason, when I was using this reflex sight, it just felt complete, completely different and it felt amazing to me when I was using it. Again, this is completely personal preference. Um, but I just really like how the uh, monocle felt. Um, but yeah, so just use whatever sight you're most comfortable with. Uh, the laser, I used a tack laser, which I almost never use. I always use the 5 milliwatt for these bonuses right here. But in this case, I actually wanted to uh, boost my, uh, what is it, ADS speed. Um, so that's really what I was going for with the tack laser, uh, is this pro right here aimed on sight speed. And so that's really why I'm using the TAC uh, laser over the 5 milliwatt. I'm using the 8.7 inch steel barrel. Uh, again, this is really just for recoil control. These other two uh, pros don't really matter. Um, because I mentioned for every gun challenge, more or less, you should do it in hardcore. And I know if you're a core player, hearing me say play hardcore, it's kind of like you don't, you don't want to. You don't, you don't like hardcore. And I feel that because me personally, I'm a core player. But... I've gone for the max camo in like the past three Call of Duties, and I found it had to be ten times faster for all of them to be done in hardcore. I don't know why exactly. Um, I think it's because like for a headshot, it's a one-shot kill to the head. So as long as you get your first shot on his head, you don't have to worry about consistently hitting his head. Um, for lo again, for long shots, you only have to hit him a couple times. I'm assuming that's why it's so much quicker, because like that's really the only difference between hardcore and core. Um, but yeah, I just, you really, oh, sorry about my phone. You really should just play it in hardcore. Um, so those first two pros aren't really going to be taken advantage of because damage range, it doesn't matter. 
you're still going to kill the person in a couple shots. Bullet velocity. You're playing on small maps for the most part. That's going to be the most efficient or... Yeah, most efficient to get your camos done is to be playing on small maps. So, you're not going to have any bullet travel time. And then, the reason I'm using the barrel actually is for the recoil control. For the muzzle, compensator. Only reason for recoil control. Nothing fancy. And then I'm using stippled grip tape for your ADS speed and your sprint to fire speed. If you're wondering why I'm not using an extended mag or anything, the PP Bison has like... Ah, I think it's a 60 round mag already. Like, if you put on extended mags, you're putting on 84 rounds. So, it's... So it's got a lot of ammo in general, and it's hardcore, so you're not going to need over 60-something bullets anyways. Uh, but that's actually it for the kills build, and now I'll hop into... Oh god, I never get this right. I think it's the... Oh, uh, I think it's the hip fire build. It was actually right for once. It was the hip fire build. So here it is, the hip fire build. Um, getting right into it, the laser. Always want to use the 5 milliwatt. You can see right here in the description, it says 5 milliwatt green laser greatly improves hip fire accuracy, where if you swap to the other laser that affects hip fire accuracy... You can see right here the attack laser doesn't at all. It's all about aiming. The one milliwatt, right in the description, doesn't say greatly. So you like that's kind of a giveaway. But also, you can see I have the five milliwatt equipped right here. This is the bonus I'm getting from it. If I was to equip the one milliwatt right here, you can see it's going to reduce its accuracy. So clearly, five milliwatts better. Another huge pro that the five milliwatt has is that its sprint to fire speed is increased. So if you don't know what sprint to fire speed is, is the time from when you're running either double like double sprint or just sprinting in general it's that time from when you're running or when you cancel running i should say to getting that first shot out of your gun more or less so having it as a pro it's going to reduce that time allowing you to get your up your your gun up and like ready to shoot and if it's a con it's going to extend that time making it longer for you to get your gun up and ready to shoot in hardcore this is extremely beneficial because getting your gun up and getting that first shot off can that you the kill because in hardcore you only need one or two or three at, like m at max shots to kill somebody so getting your gun up before the other guy and getting the first shots out say you get a lucky headshot the guy's dead instantly before he even had a sh shot to shoot you um so that's why i use a five milliwatt the only con is that it is visible to enemies where the one milliwatt is not so do if you do find yourself getting uh pre-fired around the corner you can swap onto the one milliwatt but i would highly 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 recommend that you just stick it out with the five milliwatt uh, I'll get to the suppressor later, because this is really just a filler attachment. And then we have the extended mags and the perk. These two really tie together. So, for extended mags, for hip fire kills, you need to shoot more. More or less, because you're not going to be as accurate as aiming down your sight. So, you want more rounds in your magazine. That way you have more of a chance to kill that person that you're just spraying at, uh, hoping to kill them. So, I use extended mags. Now with that same principle, since you have to shoot more, you want as many bullets in your mag as possible, you constantly want to be reloading, that way your magazine is as filled as possible. So, to reduce that time of you reloading, I, I use slide of hand to keep that short. So, that's why I use slide of hand and extended mags. For the rear grip, stippled grip tape, this is going to help you out with your ADS speed and your sprint to fire speed. I touched on sprint to fire speed, but if you don't know what ADS speed is, um, it's that time from you hip firing. To being able to look down, or to you actually looking fully down your scope or your sight. So, again, if it's a pro, it's reducing that time, allowing you to aim down your sight quicker. And if it's a con, it's extending that time, making it longer for you to look down your scope or sight. So, again, just like sprint to fire speed, extremely beneficial. It's going to allow you to be accurate um, faster than somebody, say, that had aim down sight speed, like, as a con. That has it slower than you. So... It'll nut you kills if you can get your gun up before the other guy in hardcore. And in core in general. But hardcore, it's just like... It's just multiplied because it's only one or two shots to kill somebody. So that's four out of the five attachments. And again, the fifth attachment is really just a filler. Since this is a hip fire build, um, you really want to look for things that are going to boost your hip fire accuracy. Usually that would be the Merc foregrip. Again, there's no foregrip attachment. That's why we have the rear grip. Uh, but if I was going to go through all these real quick, you look at the pros... These are all do it, dealing with aiming. Movement speed you could use, but again, it's also helping with your ADS speed, so it's kind of pointless. Optics, you're not going to use it all. You're not uh, aiming down sight. So right here, these two, completely useless, more or less. The barrel, you can see recoil control, you're not aiming, it's not going to matter. Bullet velocity, damage range, basically useless. Damage range, bullet velocity, again, basically useless. And aiming, basically useless. So, in my opinion, um, the like next attachment that you would get the most uh, benefit from would be a suppressor. One, it's going to keep you suppressed. Um, 
and the off chance that the guy really just can't figure out where you are because you have a suppressor on it might give you that extra one or two seconds to live and since you're hip firing you, you're not gonna be as accurate so that one or two seconds may actually not do the kill i it's probably happened to me like three times uh <laughs> getting damascus um where the suppressor actually helped me on these small maps uh but hey if it works if it helps it helps you know so there's no sense in not taking an attachment you want to make sure you have five out of five attachments to make sure you're working on your tire camo so i just use a monolithic suppressor if you're wondering why i use a monolithic over any other any of the other suppressors you can see the cons for the monolithic are aiming aiming cons which you're not aiming so these cons basically are non-existent for you and then it also helps with your damage range so i think it's the only suppressor that has two pros which it is so again damage range is basically useless but hey it's there um with a lightweight suppressor it's going to actually reduce your damage range so this con could play into effect i doubt it but because you're on these small maps and hardcore but hey it's a con so why not just use this one clearly better um and then again the pro is just being suppressed tactical suppressor again got aiming cons which are non-existent so that, that's good uh but it, then it doesn't have the damage uh range so there's really no reason to not use the uh monolithic but that's actually it for the hipfire kills i think the next build is the reload build all right this is the reload build it's uh i'm not gonna spend too much time on it because it's basically identical to the kills build the only difference is i swapped out the optic for sleight of hand since you're doing reload kills you want to be reloading faster um and i actually i wanted to keep my aim, aim down sight speed high while keeping my recoil low so i didn't want to swap out a uh like a primary attachment that's going to help with either recoil control or ads speed so like the thing that made the most sense to me was the optic the pp bison has pretty good iron sights um they're not too like intrusive or anything they don't block your screen a whole bunch and actually removing an optic you can see any optic like i was using the monocle the con is aim down sight speed i think it is for all of them so actually having an iron sight is going to increase your uh, ads time which was something i was going for so i just don't have an optic all right before i get too far into this next build with still which is the long shot and mounted kills build i'm going to take you in game and i'm going to explain how you use this atrocious looking gun um a big a big part of this build and how this gun is built is to make sure that on your class you have a smoke grenade uh equipped and i'll explain that to you uh right now in game all right so here we are in game um a quick note is that if you don't know shoot house is basically symmetrical so Whatever I do on this side is basically going to apply to that side down there. So, this is the spot where you want to be on either side. It's this wall um, on either end of mid lane. Uh, so, going on to, going back to the smoke grenade, what you want to do is you want to take that smoke grenade. You want to throw it over this wall. You're going to wait a second to let it puff up uh, to completely block up visibility down mid lane. So, I do that. Wait a second, let it puff up, jump up on the wall. Mount your gun to take advantage of getting the monocles. And you look on the left side of my screen, you can see the smoke is completely blocking the sight. But you can see through it with the thermal sight. Same applies to the night vision sight. I'll kind of explain why you'd want to use a night vision sight over the thermal sight uh, when I go through the attachments of the gun. But, so, you have your thermal sight. Your gun is mounted. Anybody on this wall is a mounted kill. Especially for a submachine gun. Uh, the mounted kill distance that you need uh, depends on weapon class. So, like, sniper rifles have the longest uh, range to get mounted kills. But you can also get mounted kills for sniper rifles right here at the spot. Uh, which is why this is such a good... Um, strategy in my opinion um and then i mean like i just said so ars are a little bit longer but shorter than snipers smgs shorter than assault rifles longer than pistols pistols shorter than i think everything so anybody on that wall is gonna be a long shot for you and then if you have your teammates in the right spot on the left lane and on the right lane right here there's about two or three spawns i've seen multiple people and i myself have gotten five kills or more within a matter of like three seconds their whole team will be either be forced to spawn here or behind the wall and if they spawn right here you can literally just sit here and spray and you'll pick up a ton of kills doesn't happen too often but when it happens it's amazing so right there they can spawn there and they again those kills right there are long shots on the wall is a long shot if you're killing somebody over and over and over again they tend to get like angry at you so they try to find new ways to kill you i've seen many people come to this corner right here which on this side it's right here and uh, they'll try and peek you that way. Uh, and if you kill them there, again, they're a long shot. Where the long shot cuts off to, like, not a long shot, to a close shot, whatever you want to call it. It's about right here. It's about halfway through um, from that wall to these boxes right here. So it's about halfway through the lane itself. 
So you just want to make sure you kill them as quickly as possible to make sure you're getting a long shot. You got to stay mounted to get your mounted kills. Um, but yeah, that's really it. If, if you're on that wall, it's the same exact for this same exact thing as this side. Sorry, Couldn't, completely forgot what I was saying. So right here's a mounted. Sh if you're on that wall, shoot somebody here. You get a long shot. Shoot somebody on the wall. Long shot, and then the long shots again. They stop like halfway through uh, right here. But in my opinion, um, this is the best map to get your um, man to get your long shots and mounted kills. Maybe not your mounted kills. You could play shipment and you could just mount on something as soon as you spawn and you'll get a lot more kills because it's such a small map. Uh, but this is this is an amazing spot for your mounted kills or not mounted kills. I mean, it is your mounted kills as well, but your long shots. Um, for me, when I got my Damascus. Um, shipment and rust weren't out yet so this was the only small map and there was usually always a shoot house 24 7 playlist going so it was extremely easy for me to get all these challenges done so i don't exactly know what your scenario is going to be what your case is uh when it comes to playlists when you're when you're actually watching this video and going for this camo um but hopefully shoot house is going to be available to you pretty often and if not it is possible to get long shots on rust so that would most likely be the second best spot to get uh your long shots and mount kills done but i'm gonna hop back into the gunsmith and i'll break continue breaking down uh this atrocious looking gun all right so here we are back at the gunsmith for the long shot slash mount kills build um so again using your what optic you want to use is either the two different thermal sites or the night vision site so I explained why you might want to use a night vision sight when I was explaining to you how to use this build. Um, as you can see right here, the thermal hybrid and the Merc thermal optic, these are actually unlocked pretty earlier than they usually are. Usually the thermal optics are like the last two attachments that you unlock. And in this game, you usually have a, an extremely like high level gun, like assault rifles are 70. Uh, SMGs, I think this is like one of the lower level SMGs, but 49 is still a pretty high level for your gun. So, with those two attachments usually being later, you're going to unlock them later in your level tree. Where if you scroll up, the night vision sight, I think, is always unlocked before the thermal sights. So, you're going to have the night vision sight before the thermal sights. And if we go into the camos and we go, I think, to splinter, right here, yep, is the long shot kills. Um, you can see that you're going to unlock splinter, which are the long shot kills, uh, uh, quite, quite early on. It's about halfway through uh, the levels. So, you're going to unlock the like the uh, category before you actually have a thermal site so what i ended up doing basically 90 percent of the time i don't even like i probably used the thermal sites once or twice because i never had them unlocked was i used the night vision site um you might not think it so because it's not a thermal site it's a night vision site but the thermal or not the thermal the night vision site works the same exact way um you'll see through you'll be able to see through the smoke no problem um the only difference is like instead of being a bright white color they're going to be orange and if they cold blooded if they have cold blooded on they're just going to be a a just black color they're just black um there isn't it's still it's a little bit harder to see them compared to a uh compared to a thermal sight but again it's still extremely easy to see them rather than not being able to see them see them with like a reflex sight so that's why you want to use the night vision sight if you don't have the thermal sights unlocked um perk sight of hand just to make sure you're reloading as like not today you're reloading just to make sure you have as many bullets in your magazine as possible at all times granulated grip tape um i just realized i didn't actually showcase it or i didn't mention it specifically in the video where i was showing you guys on shoe house how to play but if you go back and you look at that video or that clip you'll see how steady my crosshair is when i'm not like moving my mouse at all um, the reason for that is i've built the gun up for aiming stability that way you're as accurate as possible because when someone jumps at up on that wall you like have a split second to kill them because the first spot that person's gonna look is at the other wall which you're standing on so it comes down to a name fight so you want to make sure your crosshair is as steady as possible you don't really build the gun towards anything else because you're mounted so your recoil is gonna be low you don't need to worry about aiding down sight speed or movement speed because you're just sitting on that wall so your grip tape with that in mind i use granulated grip tape for aiming stability and walking steadiness doesn't really apply because you're not walking around and I used an 8.7 inch steel barrel. This is going to help with your recoil control, most importantly. Bolt velocity and damage range, yeah, sure, they're pros. But again, if you're playing on a small map in a hardcore, you're not really going to take advantage of those. And then your muzzle. You're using the compensator for added in recoil control. 
Um, you could swap it in for recoil stabilization, but I'm not. I've kind of I've said it a couple times throughout all my, like this entire series that I think the muzzle brake is horizontal recoil control. Um, I'm not entirely sure about that. So if someone does know, let me know in the comments down below. But I think the compensator is vertical, which is to me is a way bigger deal than horizontal recoil. So uh, you could swap out the muzzle brake or the compensator from the muzzle brake if you wanted to. I just stick with the compensator. Uh, but that's actually it for all the builds. Um, now I'm going to hop into the camo requirement part of the video. Uh, where I think, it, did I just, I feel like I didn't, I just said something that wasn't even a word. But uh, this, yeah, I'm going to hop into the camo requirement part of the video. Where I just go over all the all the camos themselves. What you need to do to unlock them. Best maps to play on, game mode, and the variation of that game mode. I'll see you in there in a second. Alright, so now we're into the camo requirement part of the video where I'm just going to go over all the different camo categories, uh, what you need to do to unlock all the camos within that category, um, and then I'll give you what maps are the best, um, well that I found best to get the uh, challenges done, uh, what variant of the game mode, whether it's um, hardcore or core, and then what weapon build uh, is like best for that uh, challenge. So starting off with the first one, you have spray paint, you need to get 500 just normal kills, um, the maps are just Shoe House, Shipment, and Rust. They're uh, the smallest maps. Uh, are going to be the easiest to get the most amount of kills on. Um, running into the most fights. So a lot of these uh, challenges will all have the same three maps. Um, and if, if you watch this video like months down the line. And there's more maps out. Like there's like when I did Damascus. When I was grinding for Damascus. I Shipment was uh, just coming out. Uh, shoot house was out for a little bit but rust wasn't even out so like as time goes on more maps will be released and then hopefully smaller maps will come out that way it'll be easier for you guys but uh for the spray paint the best build is going to be the kills build um it's just a bit the best build that is like good overall so that's the build that works the best uh for woodland you're going to need 100 headshots the maps again shoot house shipment and rust um play hardcore and then again the kills build Digital, you need 110 crouching kills. Uh, same thing, same three maps. Shoe House, Shipment, and Rust. Play Hardcore once again. And then also the kills build. For the crouching kills, um, if, like, if you get this on Shipment, you can get it done in like, what, three games or two games? It's insane. Uh, what I would do is I just spawned. As soon as I spawn, I would just crouch. That way every kill I got, I mean, it's kind of, kind of obvious, but you just crouch as soon as you spawn and then you just stay crouched the entire time. Shipment is such a small map that... Even if you're not moving that much because you're crouching, you're still going to get a lot of kills just by crouching and not moving that much. Um, then for Dragon, you need 100 and you just need 100 hipfire kills. Again, same three maps. Shipment, Shoot House, and Rust. Uh, again, once again, Hardcore. Um, this, this is like the first spot where Hardcore is like super beneficial. I mean, don't get me wrong. For kills and uh, crouching kills, it's pretty beneficial. For headshots, I think it's extremely beneficial because it's only a one hit, one hit headshot kill. Uh, but then also for hip fire kills, only having to hit the guy once or twice while you're just spraying at him, hip firing is uh, just extremely useful. But again, sh shoe house shipment and rust, uh, hardcore like I said, and then you want to use either the hip fire build or depending on what um, what the kills build has on it. If it's got the five milliwatt laser and the Merc four grip, it'll be you'll it's basically the a hip fire build gun if it's got the five milliwatt laser and the Merc four grip on it. Um, so you can pick up your fire kills with that as well. For Splinter, you need 50 long shots. If you guys are just, just skipping to this part of the video from the timestamps below, uh, and you kind of want like an idea or a tip on how to get your long shot kills pretty easily, definitely go back and watch um, the long shot slash mounted kill build in this video. I take you guys through exactly the type of play style that I use to get all my long shot mounted kills. And in my opinion, it's it's very effective. Uh, I like I just said, I got all my guns, um, all the long shot and mounted kills done that way. Uh, so for the maps, you want to play Shoe House more specifically because that gun was built specifically for um, that map and that playstyle. Uh, but also Rust, uh, I haven't actually gone for a gold gun, uh, getting long shots on Rust yet. Um, with th these new DLC guns, I'm starting to play Rust. Uh, but actually when I went through and in my Damascus, Rust wasn't out. But there is a couple spots that I've seen on Rust where you can get long shots. Again, you want to play hardcore, and the weapon build is, of course, the long shot build. So, the next one is topography or topo, topo. Um, you need 50 mounted kills. 
um you can get your mounted kills on either shoe house with the long shot build so like you go i usually would wait for uh, this topography camo category to be unlocked before i went for my long shot kills because you can get your long shot kills and your mounted kills you can pick them up at the same time um so you can play shoe house like using that same exact play style just punch it for the long shot build shipment uh, extremely easy map to get your mounted kills you just mount like on anything as soon as you spawn you're gonna see tons of people um that's an extremely easy way to get it done and then rust it's kind of like shoe house it's not as small as shipment um but there's definitely some good spots that you can just mount your gun and pick up a lot of kills again you want to play hardcore and then you can either use the long shot build if you're going with that split uh play style for splinter with that like sitting on the wall with the thermal sight or you can just use the kills build if you're playing on like shipment or rust for tiger you just need to get 250 kills with max attachments i think this is actually the one camo category for smgs that you have to get more kills with um, then assault rifles. I think assault rifles is 180. For SMGs, you only you will you need more at 250. Uh, the maps, just uh, any small map again. So shoe house, shipment, and rust. Um, you want to play hardcore, and then you can just use any build. All the builds that are featured in this video all have max attachments, so you can specific uh so you, so you can get your tiger camo unlocked. And then stripes, 40 reload kills, shoe house, shipment, and rust. Again, small map. You need to run into the most people. Play hardcore, and then you want to use the reload build. Uh, the stripes actually if it used to be a lot harder to get your stripe uh camo kills those reload kills but they i mean it's been like after a month of the game being out they reduced or they increased the amount of time you needed or the amount of time that was given to you to get a reload killed um so it's a lot easier to get your reload kills now so you don't specifically need a reload build you might actually find yourself getting your uh reload kill challenges done just by playing the game going for other challenges so that's kind of nice uh, for the reptile camo category, you need 75 kills with no attachments. Again, you just want to play on those small maps, so shoot out Shimon and Rust. Hardcore, and then no weapon build because you need to use a bare bones gun. For skulls, you need 25 3 kill streaks. Um, this is kind of kind of weird. So I for the maps I just said shoot out Shimon and Rust, just because you're gonna run into the most people that way. Same exact thing as all the other camo categories. You run into the most people, you're gonna run into the most fights, so you're gonna have the most opportunity to run into a three kill streak. Now I understand that all of you might not be the world's best Call of Duty player, so having to get a three kill streak on these small maps might be harder for you. If that's the case, um, just take any of the builds really, uh, and just hop into Ground War. Ground War is extremely easy to get your three kill streaks because it's such a big map. There's so many people, um, and you can just camp real quick and just Call of Duty. There's not a lot of recoil on your guns, so you can shoot people and kill them pretty easily across like long distances. So, if you're having trouble on these smaller maps, I would definitely, if you're, if you're, if you're like an average player, definitely, I would definitely recommend playing on Shoe House, Shimon, and Rust. Just because, like I said, you're going to run into the most fights. You're going to have the most chances to get your three kill streaks. Um, but, if you're maybe uh, a little bit below average, or you're just struggling, hop into Ground War. I definitely did it for some of the, for some of the guns, um, whenever I was getting smacked around on those small maps. It just makes it a little bit easier for you. So, again, play Shoe House, Shimon, and Rust, but getting smacked around a little bit just hop into ground war and then if you're playing those three small maps just play whatever version of uh, the map is in hardcore and then i would recommend using the kills build right off the bat but if you play ground war you can kind of just screw around with other builds and see what works best for you uh but that's it guys that's all the camel categories that's all the challenges um so that's actually be it for this video if you guys liked the video drop it a like if you didn't there's a button there for that as well um I always feel weird asking for people to subscribe, so I put in this little clip of Jev um, at the end here explaining that whole thing. Uh, but that's going to be it for this video, guys. Um, have a good day. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Jeff is such a lame. He used to mock people for asking for subscribers, and now that's all he does. It's like, dude, the analytics between a video where you tell somebody... Uh, just simply just adding hey can you subscribe versus not it's actually insane it's literally a friendly reminder that you can subscribe i ain't begging for shit i got enough but if you want to subscribe i appreciate it. <laughs>